Okay, we're back on Think Tech here on a given Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock. We're doing Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And it's more than energy about energy, it's energy about entrepreneurial activity. And because we want to study entrepreneurial activity so we can apply that to energy, okay? Um, and uh, we, we, we're in touch with uh, Austin Yoshino and uh, Everett Amundsen, and they just won the business plan competition <laughs> at the Shidler College, so they're heroes. And, for, the uh, second, uh, for the second time. This, uh, pardon me, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so Mitch, why don't you give a, a more detailed but not a very detailed uh, introduction <laughs> of these guys. Yeah, well, we, uh, they're uh, good friends of ours. They, they came on the show about, almost about a year ago with another, their first invention, which was uh, a gyroscopic, uh, almost like a chair to- uh, Yeah, gyroscopic uh, walker. There you go. So that people with cerebral palsy who couldn't stand on their own uh, could actually walk basically on their own, assisted by this chair. It was a really uh, fascinating uh, piece of technology. And, uh, and, then, and then I found out from the uh, UH Office of Technology Transfer that these guys have won yet another competition for a whole different uh, product. So now they're serial entrepreneurs and serial mm -hmm. business plan winners and uh, really <laughs> great. So I thought we'd bring them back to tell us all about, A, I'm really curious about what the status is of the first invention, and then they can talk a lot more about this new one. So what is the status of the, uh, the, the Walker? So the Walker is still in development. Um, unfortunately, there's have been some time lags, just the comp complexity of the medical device space um, is kind of getting to us. But we, you know, we're continuing to work on that. Um, slow and steady progress, a lot of 3D printed models, a lot of CAD drawings, a lot of gyroscopic research. Um, we're very excited about that. Uh, as far as the new product, uh, this kind of came along when we were doing research into the harnesses for the walkie device. Um, and we found that the compression can help to calm people. Um, and so we thought, you know, if we pivoted it and changed it a little bit, we could tackle this anxiety and mental health space. Um, and something that we're very familiar with and we're very excited and we're very passionate about. Hmm. Okay, so the second company, the one we're talking about, another one you just won the most recent award about, is yeah. into mm -hmm. the mental space. You're doing mental yes. now. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. So, are you guys students, uh, or, or are you? Would you classify yourself as full-time entrepreneurs? Uh, full-time entrepreneurs. Actually just, yeah, Austin actually yeah. just graduated, um, as well as a few of our other executives. So he's now out in the real world, um, being a full-time entrepreneur. I'm still a student, so I have one year left at UH before I finish up my degree. Um, but I, I spend about, you know. 20 hours a week at least for um, on our company. So I'm a part-time entrepreneur. <laughs> okay, what's the name of your company? Monoola Innovations Incorporated. And what, are you co-stockholders in the company? Is that what it is? Yes. Yep, we're mm -hmm. co-founders. Uh, he is the CEO and I am the uh, CSO, Chief Sales Officer. Do you have a, an office or uh, you operate out of one of your garages? We're definitely operating out of our garages. You know, it's the <laughs> pinnacle of entrepreneurship. <laughs> Got to start <Okay>. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Just being realistic here. <laughs> oh, okay. absolutely. Austin, Austin you well, have let's, some uh, Let's just get a little plug in for the accelerator part of this, because this, this morphed from the uh, yeah, UH at Accelerate uh, that the, uh, originally was downtown, and now it's back with the Scheidler Business School. So can you just give us a little update of what that whole program is all about? Has it changed? Because you did the first one, so obviously. Right. So, yeah, we, we've been fortunate enough to work with Pace uh, through almost all of their competitions now. Um, Austin competed in the Breakthrough Innovation Challenge, uh, which is one of their first ones, and uh, did that himself, and then brought our team on for the Business Plan Challenge, which we competed and won uh, last year. And then this year, um, it got taken over and uh, rebooted, and it is now the. Um, uh, University of Hawaii Venture Challenge. Yeah. Right. What do you, as, need, as what do you need that stuff for? What do you need that stuff for? Why don't you just go and do business? What do you have to get involved in competitions, especially if you win them all the time? It's a great way to get money. You know, it's a very non-diluted, equity-free grant money, um, as well as resources. You know, we've got a excellent marketing yeah. package that we plan to put to use very soon. Um, and as exposure, you know, we're on this show with you guys now. 
Um, <laughs> this is the big time, yeah. Austin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, and, and really, and really has been the, another one of the amazing resources we've been able to get through this. And one of the reasons why we keep coming back is um, the because they do a lot of the professionals and residents. Um, you can talk to you know people who have done this for years and been doing it. Uh, they've always been able to hook us up with some amazing um, mentors, and um, many of them are still on our board today. Um, and we and so it's it's just really about the resources, you know, and and you know it's great to get a big check at the end of the day too. Mm -hmm. Besides the check, now, let check me ask work. you about the mentors. You know, I keep hearing yeah. about mentors. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. do you really need mentors? Why don't you just um, you know have a drink together and and, and, <laughs> and be creative? Why do you? Why do you? Give me an example of a question you would put to a mentor and the kind of answer you would get from a mentor that took you to a step that you would not have been able to achieve without him or her. You know, well, we well, as you can see, you know, we're we're fairly young, um, definitely on the inexperienced side. Uh, you know, we're we're creative, we're quick learners. Um, but we lack experience, you know, and that's where the mentors really come into play. Um, and it's a lot of the nitty gritty things that you wouldn't necessarily think of, like, hey, this is how you have to file your taxes, or these are the incorporation rules, or, you know, this is the product launch cycle that isn't necessarily taught in the textbook and you have to know by experience, or, you know, this way might not work and I've tried it this way. And it, it, so there's just so many different questions to ask. And it, it, it really takes a specialized mentor. You know, Everett and I, and the entire team um, pride ourselves in being pretty good at a lot of different things, which is kind of what you have to be in entrepreneurship. But there's times where we need very specialized knowledge. You know, we need specialized lawyers, we need specialized accountants and financial people and marketing, you know, is a very specialized bit as well. So having those mentors is really helpful in, in completing and executing our business ideas. Okay, Absolutely. so when you go to a business plan competition, you have to pitch, right? That's part of it. You have to stand yeah. up there. You you prepare in advance. You prepare your slides. Uh, do you guys pitch together, or is it a tag team kind of affair? Uh, how how do you do that? And and then we'll ask you to do a little pitching, but with the slides, <laughs> uh, just to show Absolutely. how pitching works. You know? Yeah, sure. We'd love to. So what we usually do is we will develop it. Um, usually one of us will uh, start out and do uh, the story part of it. So originally when we did the first one, Austin did it because obviously he has the connection with his little brother. Um, and then for this one, I took the bulk of it. It was uh, my partner, Kendra and I, we did that together. Uh, Kendra is an amazing businesswoman. Um, and I took the story because I've struggled with anxiety throughout my life um, and still currently struggle with it. And so it's a very personal topic to me. Um, so we like to start out, you know, with, uh, you know, the personal side of it, you know, tell the story, really get the message behind there before. And then we sort of di dive into, you know, why we're doing it, you know, make sure we have the market and everything to back it up. And then we sort of just go back and forth, depending on uh, who's expert, or, you know, who's a little more uh, uh, clear on what parts. Hmm. Were you a shy child, Everett? I was actually not. I was not. Uh, I've, I, I've I already knew loud. that. I knew that. <laughs> 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 what would you add oh, to I've, that, I've Austin? I've always been loud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can't you tell? He's very outgoing. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you do a tag team then. Each one of you gets up, yeah. do a little thing, then the other one and so forth. Okay, we have a couple well, we, of we slides. Like to make it, we, we like to make it really dynamic and go back and forth within the presentation, you know, make sure we're keeping everyone's attention. Do you? But we'd, we'd be happy to do some slides for you. Okay, do them. So one of the things that we took a very hard look at when we we're getting into this space, um, because I had a lot of personal experience with it, but we needed to know what people were already doing, what's where they're already spending their money, what they're doing instead, and what we're trying to one up essentially. And so within that research, we found that physical touch was one of the biggest things, such as hugging or cuddling. Um, people also used um, sometimes drugs such as nicotine or marijuana or um, Adderall or other prescription drugs uh, to manage food. their stress or, or food. food. Absolutely. Or food, food yes. Another big one. Or alcohol. Um, so we, or alcohol. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so we really wanted to dive into and see, you know, and we saw that um, at least 50% of people use some sort of a physical touch. That was the really big thing was that, that they're all across the board is their physical touches. We wanted to um, really dive into that and have like a, a, a really solid solution. Another key point for this is that 
for example, the 55% self-medication, we, we measured um, what they did and how also how effective it was. And for specifically the self-medication market um, or sector, there was a big difference between people reported using it and the effectiveness of it. Um, so that was a big clue that like, you know, people are trying different things, but it's not necessarily working. And, you know, that self-medication isn't necessarily the most health, healthy thing. Um, so if we can introduce something that works and is healthier, you know, we think we have a really strong play. Here. And all of this is enhanced in the time of COVID, right? You make that point. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you now just... we have the statement of the problem. Okay, now yes. you, you've stated the problem and very succinctly, I appreciate that. Yeah. And, oh, and now we're, now we're going to say how you move into that space with an idea that nobody else has. Go. Right. Um, so the next slide, uh, the science of compression. Um, the way we came about this idea was thinking, you know, what do people do when they're really stressed? What's something that works really efficiently, really effectively, and is very intuitive, you know? And the first thing that came to mind was a hug. You know, you have a really lo long day, you come home and you get a nice hug from your loved one or your significant other, and it makes you feel really warm and um, really re alleviates your stress. So we looked into some of the science side of it. You know, currently it's being used by weighted blankets, by swaddling, by hugs and cuddling. Um, and the effects are um, increased oxytocin, dopamine, and serotonin, a decrease in blood pressure, a slower heart rate, and a more calm and relaxed feeling. Okay, hugs are good. I mean, we've known that from the oldest profession. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay, so what do, you, what do you do for making a living on, on uh, compression and the like? Sorry, sorry, would you mind repeating the question? Yeah. Well, what's your solution? What are you, what are oh, you selling? Oh, you are yeah. selling something, aren't you? Right, yeah. right. How'd you come up the with solution, it? Yeah. The solution is a discreet undergarment vest. Um, it's meant, we, we designed this with the idea of it being used with a working millennial. So, you know, you're about to go to a business meeting and you're really stressed. You're gonna give a public presentation. You're gonna take a test as a college student. And you're really stressed. And you can wear this under your clothing where nobody would notice. And you could activate the compression mechanism very discreetly. Um, so, for proprietary reasons, I can't open it up, but this is the best, oops, um, with the strings on the side that pull down to activate the compression mechanism. Um, so it's, it's fairly simple, uh, but very effective, very discreet, and tackles what and we want. And adjustable. Um, and, and, and adjustable, that's another big key as well. Yeah, one, one of the main pain points we found, because uh, we ordered a few of these. That's no, it's not bulletproof. Ask, not bulletproof? Uh, not how, bulletproof. How about, not yet. Not yet. When, when, not you're yet. Skiing, yeah. when you're skiing, <laughs> can you turn it on and get warm? <laughs> uh, well, um, right now, it's, it's yeah. just the yeah. Right now, it's just the mechanical aspect of that compression. But we're really looking forward to our second version, uh, which is going to be the main point for us raising our round that we're doing right now. Is that we're going to be incorporating a lot of sensors, um, and so those sensors are going to help us measure breathing rate, heart rate. Um, and basically be able to communicate with your phone and be able to give you some knowledge on uh, how stressed maybe you're, you know, you're finding out that you're more stressed in the beginning of the day, you know, so you try and move some stuff around or you uh, or more, you get more anxious before you go to sleep. Um, and we're even looking into the possibility of being able to wear this overnight uh, so that you could sleep in this and it could help track your sleep as well. This reminds me of something that, uh, um, that Pat Sullivan did a few years ago. Uh, Mitch, what was the name of his company now? Um, uh, Ocean, Ocean, it, Ocean, Ocean it. Yeah. Ocean he had it. a he had a bed with a blanket, a magic blanket, I called it, and uh, mm -hmm. you laid down in the blanket, and the blanket would would do your heart rate, um, mm -hmm. it, it would do your breathing, and it would report on a monitor. Uh, I don't think he oh. ever got it to take blood pressure because that was too complex. Um, yeah. That was that was an idea that came out of Ocean it several years ago. Mm. This sounds similar to that. Um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, I think the application is a little different, um, but the technology or te technology application for a similar reasoning could be true, but yeah. What kind of age groups would be uh, attractive, attractive to everybody from zero to a hundred or yeah. a, um, a certain market? If, if you want to, if you want a niche group, we started off by looking at our age, um, our demographic, because we are the generation that sort of brought mental health awareness to light. You know, we've been very open about our about these issues um, in ways that other generations have not. However, during our time of market research, we found that you know it could be used by anybody. You know, lonely, elderly, in care homes, um, middle age parents in the work workforce, um, 
and really it's you know anybody who is stressed which is a very broad term but you know <laughs> very very big market right i mean especially now so what i get so far is that the vest would actually help you deal with the stress caught it because yes. it's a soft warm what do you call yes. it um it's a cloth mother in the old psychology yeah. cloth mother yeah um, but but you're going further than that you want to put sensors all around the thing and mm -hmm. uh, you want to you want to read heart rate you want to read um, mm -hmm. temperature you want to read breathing all that um mm -hmm. now, now so i give you heart rate temperature and breathing i'm going to give you that with sensors how far have you gotten have you designed software that actually interprets those signals uh, have you designed a, a wristwatch for example or a little device on your phone maybe an app um that will tell you what what the what the conclusion is from the changes in those metrics right yeah so we're it, actually it's working possession. with a yeah. we're working with an app developer or starting to begin to work with an app developer in order to um start that process we're actually just about to launch um, a Kickstarter for our version one of the product. So we're still finishing up our first round here um, and then we'll be launching the second round, but uh, we'll be watching this Kickstarter, I believe within a week or two uh, is the goal, depending on uh, some marketing materials. And we're yeah. excited to share this with everyone. Okay, well, how about sharing the market, marketing idea? Where, where would you market it to and how is the big question, would you market it? There's a big, you know, health services industry around out there. I'm right. not sure how, how healthy they are right now, um, <laughs> but here we are uh, and, and maybe this is helpful. How would you, how would you market this to a, a health service professional, maybe an administrator of a hospital or, or a private physician? Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say and how would you reach that person? Right. Well, if our marketing plan is to start with our age, our, our age group, and that would be done easily through social media ads. Um, word of mouth, uh, micro influencers on social media. Um, but if we want to target the health administrators um, market, it would be more of a B2B model, you know, making connections with hospitals, getting into the hands of them, having them purchase bulk orders for their staff. Uh, it's something that we're looking into. Um, but for the first Kickstarter campaign, we're niching in on our demographic, uh, trying to prove the concept, because we really need to get this in the hands of people, get some user feedback, uh, see how they like it, see what works, see what doesn't, um, and, and really prove the concept of people would wear a discreet vest and use it for compression, and it'll help them in their everyday life. You know, we, we obviously very strongly believe um, in this idea, and we have market research to back this, you know, but it's always great to have real life market data, you know, putting it out in the world um, and getting real user responses. So, yeah. yeah. Which one, of, that, guys, which one of you guys good. does this, does the sewing? <laughs> that would be Kendra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so our team, our team member Kendra is uh, actually a very talented seamstress and on top of her already uh, vast repertoire of business skills, but I actually did a little bit of sewing as well. So we spent about, what was it like six hours up in, up on the roof? No, bro. We, it was like six sewing. hours a weekend for like a month. Oh, that's true. I, yeah. I, I learned yeah. how to sew for this. I mean, I can't sew straight, but I learned how to sew just to make these prototypes. It was, yeah. it was quite the process. Yeah. We, well, when yeah. you get beyond this, okay. And you want to do volume, where are you going to go for sewing? So uh, we're, we're actually working with manufacturers. Uh, Go ahead. I was I was saying the same exact thing. <laughs> Looking at some national manufacturers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, we're we're trying to we're trying to keep it um, in in country as much as possible because we'd love to you know be able to slap American made on that. Um, but we're with the uh, manufacturing resources available in the U.S. and uh, the times like these, we unfortunately might have to go out of uh, out of country for just in order to keep the cost as low as possible. Mm -hmm. Mitch, you had something? For the initial prototypes, so um, we worked with a local manufacturer, Palm and Cloth. Um, she mm -hmm. was excellent, uh, really good quality, um, but just doesn't have the resources to mass manufacture. Yeah. So what about the, um, how well does the material hold up to this? Is it washable? Like you see the guy on my pillow, he always says, yeah, I can just store your pillow in the washing machine. Um, mm -hmm. Have you had a chance to uh, wear it enough to find out, you know, what works and what doesn't work? Yep, I've been wearing it off and on um, since we were able to get that uh, version of the pro of our uh, minimum viable product. And I, I wear it 
you know, for, for meetings, for tests, for presentations. Um, it's really comfortable. I wear it underneath, like I would wear it underneath, you know, a, a shirt like this, you know, for a time like this, if I were uh, not as confident as I am in my public speaking skills, um, to give myself a little boost, you know, be able to calm yourself down, you know, right before you go in. And even, you know, the really, really the goal of this is that you wouldn't be able to tell even if we're, you know, I'm sitting right here and I just, you know, reach down and pull this, you know, you can't really see what I'm doing, but that, you know, I would have initialized the compression for the vest and would have already started to calm down a little bit. So you, you actually feel that you feel that experience. Do you have to tighten Absolutely. it up or something? Do you have to like pull mm -hmm. strings like on an, on an airplane, mm -hmm. an airplane uh, safety vest uh, so that it gets tight enough or, or, and, and how many sizes do you have? Small, medium, large, would one fit me? Would one fit Mitch? He's taller, you know? Uh, how, how many? Right. How, are you, how are you doing that? Yeah. Well, we're working with our manufacturers in order to do this uh, sizing. Right now, we're looking at doing a small, medium, and large. Uh, but once we're done with this first run, uh, then we'll mo most likely look into expanding that for you know big and tall. Mm -hmm. And um, what? And so, you, do you have to tighten it? Or does it have to be? You know, yeah. So there, yes. there's two tightening mechanisms. On so yeah. Yeah. Go so ahead. essentially, you zip up the front of the vest and then put it on, and then you pull down on two strings that are on each side, and it uh, compresses. And then you can well, jump, you out, jump out of the plane. That when you've done that, right. you can, So how do you uncompress? You just adjust um, it like you're adjusting like your pulling shirt. Pulling it shut down. Yep. 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 You just yep. sort of play with it a little bit, and it naturally releases. Okay, I get, I get my Super question easy. now was uh, about, have we finished the slides, Austin? Are we done? Is there any others you want to show? Um, I believe there are a couple more about the market research. Yeah, why don't you um, do that? But we, we, can, we can move regardless. Well, okay, I'll tell you what my question was. Maybe we can weave it in somehow. Sure. So you know, you've been through this. You prepared for it. You presented. You know, you, you guys do have a, a kind of rhythm between you where you can do the tag team mm -hmm. routine, which is really important. <laughs> Absolutely. Because, because investors uh, want to see that you get along. They want to see that you work together, that you're on the same page. And so the tag team thing is really important. But my yeah. question to you is this, um, you know, what sold them? Why did, you, why did you win? What was it that turned them on? How, how, did you, how did you convince them that you were the top of this whatever group it was in terms of the competition? Did they tell you? Do you know? Well, I mean, we can assume from uh, our winning twice now, but uh, we're we're very lucky um, with the people that we have. Um, it really is uh, a lot about the talent um, and the people that we're able to utilize. Uh, like I've mentioned, you know, our mentors and our amazing team of executives and vice presidents. Um, but I, I think that really what sets us apart is that we really, we, like I mentioned, we always include a compelling story and then we back it up with evidence. You know, it's, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you state something, you know, you, you, you get them, get them hooked, involved, you know, we share with them why we care about this product so much, why it affected me personally, or, you know, and, and I'm able to use it uh, to help my um, anxiety and stress. And then just back that up with all the data we can, you know, make sure that we are very thorough, you know, we pride ourselves on um, having, you know, rebuttals or points or, you know, um, when, when the judges ask questions, you know, you need to be able to come up with something fast. So you either have to already know it or be able to know, know how to think on your feet. Yeah. Boston, what would you add to that? Um, I would say a common question um, is, is why are you doing this? You know, uh, we've, we've been able to avoid that um, purely based on our personal drive. Like you look at the products that we're making and there is no doubt that we're very passionate about it. We care about it and we're very knowledgeable in this field, you know, for other businesses, it's like, okay, this is a really cool product, but why are you passionate about this? Do you just want to be rich? Do you just, you know, like this space or, you know, are you really passionate about it? Are you, do you really know it? Um, but, but for us, you know, it's, we're very, we have very firsthand experience knowledge, um, very passionate and it's very personal. So, you know, we, I, I think that shows through our pitches um, as well as being storytellers, you know, we, we mm. craft our presentations very precisely. You think you um, can handle go a shark? Story flow. You think you could handle Shark Tank? Um, I would I love. You, I would love to try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would love to try. You know, we had a guy on yeah. the show a few weeks ago, um, Rob. Uh, it'll come to me, and uh, he, he's mm -hmm. the, he's the guy who does these streamers, these orange streamers. Right. Uh, anyway, he was on Shark Tank, 
And he lost. They didn't give him, they didn't offer him anything, <laughs> nothing. Uh, but he said it was tremendous because he got all this in, these inquiries from all over the country from other people. So yeah, that's <laughs> it wow. doesn't matter if you win or Excellent not. Excellent exposure. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you I, one I, other I question is that Shark Tank would ask you this question. Mm-hmm. Why, why this product by you guys when somebody else could knock you off overnight? They could build the same kind of vest and it really wouldn't be an infringement that I can see. Um, you know, even if you had a patent, uh, you don't have a patent, do you? And uh, so why, why, why wouldn't you get, not, oh, you have a utility, or uh, rather a provisional patent? Oh, sorry, uh, we have a trademark on the name as well as we're working on uh, design patents for the uh, ver- er, version two. What, what name is that that you have the trademark? The stress the stress vest. vest. Okay. Yeah. So, but why couldn't I knock you off tomorrow morning? Why couldn't I do that? Um, I, I think our our power here is in brand loyalty. Um, when we launched the market research, um, we had we had gotten a hundred interviews in two or three days, and it was all from peers reposting our our market research um, ask. And, and so, I, I think that shows you know that our peers are very excited about this product. And they understand that we've put a lot of passion and love into making this product for them. You know, it's uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You want to, you want to rip off our product, but there's, there's intuitive knowledge that you're not going to know because you don't take the time to ask the people what is, what their real problems are. You know, that's research that we've done. Um, and, and, you know, we're not going to share that it's proprietary to our company, but what we know, and we design the product based off of those, those feedback. Um, and so I feel like, you know, yeah, it's, the legal troubles are, I mean, or the legal issues, we can't protect it legally as much as we would like. Um, but, but we feel like we have a very strong brand loyalty here and p- people will feel that. Mm-hmm. And also it's- just the, the life experience. I mean, it's mm-hmm. what I've, you know, lived through. And now that I've uh, been wearing this and using this, you know, I, I think I've worn it most out of anyone on the team. And just, uh, so you could probably copy it and get, you know, probably 50% of the way there, but there's no way that anyone's going to come even close to uh, what we've been able to fine tune and tweak now that we've uh, been wearing it and using it and doing, like Austin said, all this research, really getting in touch with our customers. It's, I think our most important thing is that we, we care about our customers, we listen to them, and that's what we design our products around. And also, as we mentioned, you know, this is, this is version one that's going to go on the market in a couple of weeks, and then we start working on version two, you know, so it's, that's the version two. If you, you take version one and you buy it and you copy it, well, you know, version two is coming out soon and it's going to be way better than version one. So you're, you're not you know. telling us about version two, huh? You're not going to. No. Yeah. No. Well, that, version two that is would be the one with the sensors. Um, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, there's, that's all we can give you for a sneak peek. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we want to, we want to be held in suspense. Mitch, what do you got <laughs> on this? Okay. Well, the Shark Tank also trips people up on their, uh, their margin that they have. What's the cost of making your product? And then uh, what can you sell it for? And then they always fall on their face when they ask for too much uh, um, um, money for the evaluation they're willing to give away. So like the shark tanks just rip them to shreds at that point. Yeah, absolutely. They all come in with a great pitch and it's really smooth. And then when you get into the money part, that's where they fall apart. Either their expectations are off the chart of how much they're actually worth or their margins mm-hmm. aren't there to actually make it a business. And then the right. other part is, is the people don't recognize, like you just said, the value uh, of the fact that these people on Shark Tank have these tremendous um, marketing uh, capacity to get the product out there. So yeah, I talked. The, guy, the guy's talk name, I uh, just remembered his name is Rob Yanover. And yeah. if you guys want to talk to Rob Young over, he would tell you a lot of things about his experience as an entrepreneur and on Shark Tank, where he learned a lot. Sure. Okay, well, uh, I guess uh, I, I'd like to ask you guys for, uh, you know, with the message you want to leave with our audience about, um, and especially about young entrepreneurs, you know, who would like to do stuff like you've been doing. What is the, mm-hmm. the, the one lesson? Let me start with you, Everett. Uh, the one lesson that you would like to leave with them to help them follow in your, your footsteps and make Hawaii uh, a center for entrepreneurial activity, not only in, in this kind of business, but in energy and in all kinds of innovation. Okay, Everett, what's your advice? 
Well, I, I would say that the biggest thing is that always look for resources. There's, I mean, when I, when I first got into this space, I really didn't know what I was doing. And uh, Pace and Austin and a bunch of people uh, really helped educate me a whole lot. And so it, it really, there's a whole lot more out there than you think. And there's so much to be able to support you through either a university or your state. There's, um, we've been able to work with um, Hawaii uh, Small Business Development, uh, which has been really awesome. And uh, I would just say, really pick something you're passionate about, try and solve a problem that really means something, and then just don't stop trying. Don't stop trying, okay. Don't stop, Austin, don't stop believing. <laughs> what's the message you would leave with everybody who, who might wanna be an entrepreneur also? I would say, uh, train yourself to be very good at spotting opportunities. You know, it'd be very easy for us to look at this situation, the world that we live in and be like, man, the economy sucks. The stock market is in a bubble. It's going to crash. Um, investors aren't investing, you know, um, but, but we, we don't look at that. You know, we look for the silver linings. Um, we look at the opportunity, you know, un it's a very unfortunate circumstance, but you know, the mental health space is going to be alive and well after this, you know, to say the least. Um, and we have a product in that space um, and that's a good opportunity for us. Um, it's yeah so you know something that it's, it's a little bit of a different mindset it takes a fair bit of optimism um but i, yeah. but I think it, it in the end it would be what leads us to our success okay mitch time for you to make some sense out of this and i you know <laughs> frankly i you know you could <laughs> suggest that they send one of these vests to the white house to assist the mental <laughs> <in> the <White laughs> <House>. <laughs> But <laughs> what, what do you got for a summary well, and, a, and a wrap yeah. up on this? Well, my, my uh, main takeaway is one of optimism that our young people actually have this entrepreneurial spirit. And like uh, Austin said, they're not going to let all this bad news get them down. And I think the other takeaway is the University of Hawaii is promoting and supporting them Mm -hmm. uh, to really help the community coming up with everyday solutions to their everyday life so that the university is helping these young people develop these products, develop these businesses, and it's good for Hawaii. So well done to the University of Hawaii and the Scheidler Business School. Yeah, I, I think that's a universal thought. We really care that you guys succeed. We want, we want you to succeed and spread it around, pay it forward. Um, show Absolutely. what you've done and make this community um, love you and, 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 and love entrepreneurship in general. Thank you, Everett. Absolutely. Thank you, Austin. Great to have you guys here. Thank you so much. You so A pleasure. Quick. Thank you for the opportunity so again. So together, yeah. Thank great. you. Thanks so much. Aloha.